Welcome to the Sinners Club. We are condemned people, and so we think about that, and so naturally we project. See, the scene's taking place, and Jesus is doodling in the ground, and suddenly they, he, he, he gets tired of them pestering. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? What are we supposed to do? We're going to throw this. We're going we're to kill her. What are we going to do? And so then he stood up, and then he says this. Whoever is the first among of you to throw, whoever among you has no sin, be the first to throw the stone. Then he doesn't say anything else. He just turns and says, back to drawing. <laughs> he kneels back down, kind of does the like drop, drop. What are you going to say? Because we feel, because I feel perpetually guilty for my error, for my wrong, for my sin, I, you, will find someone who we perceive, I perceive, is worse than me and project it on them. So I feel better. I'm a condemned person, and what we do is we condemn others and make them feel worse than we do. We judge them privately, we judge them internally, we judge them publicly, because we want to feel better. We just want to feel better. We must let go of using condemnation towards other people and start accepting condemnation in our own heart. It says, you can follow along, it says, as they continued to ask them, he stood up, just like I said, he, he said, he who is without sin among you, be the first to throw this at her. What, what you need to know is that Jesus knew this, that they were right, but he also was referring, because in Deuteronomy in the law, that if you were going to persecute, stone, or kill someone for a sin that you caught them in, first, the first person to throw it to start the stoning, must be a witness of the act, and secondly, must not have that sin issue themselves. Example, if you were going to catch and persecute someone um, for stealing, you cannot have any issue of sin in your own heart and mind of thieving yourself. Right? No sin. So the guy, the, the guy, the only guy that could actually throw the rock was the guy drawn on the ground and said, hey, you friends are condemned too, and you know it. And because you're just talking about the law, let's talk about the law, that if the law is right, you throw first if none of you are dealing with this. They were greedy. They had this intense, selfish desire for something to be right, to have swift judgment and to project and to condemn someone else because of them being condemned themselves, which is why if our hearts condemn us, it says in John, if our hearts condemn us, First John, we know that God is greater than our hearts. You can flip over to the next one that says that. There you go. If our hearts condemn us, which they do, that's who we are, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. The other thing that, um, I mean, because I mean, a lot of people wonder, where's, where's the guy? <laughs> Why is it just the woman up there? So that leads me to wonder and to, to look at you then and say, well, who, who are we judging? Who are we holding to these standards, right? Um, Maybe this woman wasn't a Jewish person. She may not have been a follower of God. And we can do that too. We can find ourselves just talking to my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We can then hold other people accountable <laughs> to something that they yet aren't signed up to be accountable to, which keeps distance from Jesus, from them and Jesus. That's, that's not who he is, and we get to see that right here as he continues. It says, Jesus stood up now. He's doodled. They've left, one by one, starting from the oldest. Isn't this so beautiful? I'll talk about this in a second. He stood up. He said, woman, where are they? Is there no one to condemn you? And she said, no, no, Lord, no one. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. I love this. 
neither do I condemn you. The only one here, there who actually could said, neither do I. They've all left. But I love this. It says that they left one by one, from the oldest to the youngest. How does God redeem us? How does he redeem our sins? How does he redeem the things that we're condemned for? One by one. From the oldest thing in our past to the youngest thing that's right now. Neither do I condemn you. Some of you need to let this next scripture just roll over you. Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Maybe that wasn't there. No. I'm going to tell you, it's Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Some of you just need to let that roll over you today. I um, noticed a word this last week specifically, and the word is now. And I always read it quickly as, therefore is therefore no condemnation for those of you of us in Christ Jesus. Now is a word that I'm skipping over. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Which means like now. And some of us need to hear that right now. It's now. That's exactly what Jesus said. Right now, in the midst of you standing up, talking about now. The things that are going on now in your life. The things that happened yesterday in your life. Not the things that happened 20 years in your life or going in your life. But right now, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Friends, may we not just deal with the cobwebs of the emotional part of greed. This intense, selfish desire for something for ourselves. But may we work on killing that spider and recognize how our own hearts are condemned and slow everything down and speak in truth because it's important but in love just as I have spoken today and it's the truth that you are so loved would you buy this? God, I thank you so much for just the wisdom you give us through the stories of your word and how it speaks to us. May you continue to show us how we can kill and call out the spiders of pride and now the spiders of greed in our life. And may we be transformed through you as you are the transformed. We love you and we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me? Um, so I don't want to go a weekend without just this. There may be people in here that are here. You're newer and you're on this journey of discovering who Jesus is and what that's all about. Maybe you're in here and you're feeling dead. Maybe you're in here and you're, you're feeling lost. Maybe you're here and you're feeling like the naked person standing there. <laughs> Thinking like, I, I don't know how to get out of this situation. And maybe you're feeling broken. There is nothing so dead in your life that God cannot resurrect it again. That's what he does. He makes dead things alive. There's nothing so lost in your life that he cannot help you find it. And maybe you find it even today in this place amongst these people. And there is nothing so broken that he cannot mend and do what only he can do, the transformative work that only he can do. And for some of you, you're like, I need that. I'm in. So maybe today is a day that you need to make a decision to follow Jesus, to be in Christ Jesus, so there is therefore now, now, no condemnation. And go and sin no more. That you can be saved, that you can be free from that. Not just dealing with cobwebs, but the spider of that in your life. Missing a Messiah, a rabbi, a savior. So if that's you today, we have this um, a resource for you. As you leave today, um, there's going to be people that are going to be up front that would love to pray for you. 
Um, they'll also help you for those of you who want that next step. They're going to, in the back at the uh, welcome table, there's a, a booklet called This Changes Everything because a decision like that changes everything. So we realize well, what's, what's the next step? Go out there. This is a 21 day journey, a journal about who God is and how you can discover that. Some of you may be even here today and you're like, I don't know, like I'm kind of going to get to know the Jesus thing. Well, check out church. This is pretty good. I invite you then to just go on a journey for 21 days. And in 21 days, I'll call you up and say, what do you got? You got questions? I struggle with that too. Let's figure it out. Let's walk with open hands and find Jesus. So this is a, a gift for you. If this is a first time decision or you're ready to just go on a journey and discover what this is like. If you need prayer, there's people in the front of the room. And uh, I want to say thank you for your generosity. And um, if you're new with us, make sure you give us a uh, hey. We would love to connect with you over the coming weeks. Give you a friendly face. May I send you off with a blessing? We have a posture of uh, our hands out, which is to receive uh, and um, to give up. May, friends, we let go of greed this week. May we drop the rock, the emotional parts of this intense selfish desire for something and give it up. Go in peace, friends. I love you. I'll see you next week. This is the church's English. The church's English. The church's English. Okay, see you later. See you later.